Oh, Peter. Hello, and welcome to Making Sense of It. This is our gift to you from the Glasser Institute for Choice Theory, where each week a member of the Institute uh, presents a concept developed by Dr. Glasser and seeing how that it can work effectively in our lives and how it can be uh, transposed to everyone that makes life so much more easier and relationships healthier. And uh, today's speaker is me. Uh, I am Mona Duncan, your moderator, as well as going to be your speaker today. And we're going to be talking about our behavior. And uh, I always like to share how a friend of mine's definition of behavior was stop. Because as a child, his mom was saying, behave, behave, behave. And she was meaning for him to stop whatever it was he was doing. So it's a little bit more than just stopping. A lot of times it's starting also. So put this on a slideshow. And we will look at behavior kind of through the lens of Dr. William Glasser, who is the founder of Reality Therapy and Choice Theory. And Dr. Glasser says that all we do from birth to death is behave. And uh, our behavior is based on four components. So here is, well, I'll go back to that one. Here is our behavior car. And uh, Dr. Glasser with his uh, mechanical mind took the operation of the brain and therefore the operation of the body and reduced it down to a vehicle because it's something that most everyone is familiar with and has been in a car at one time in life and so forth. And so looking at how this vehicle, this vehicle can equate to how this vehicle works, our human body. And he, so in this picture, I stripped it down to just the drivetrain, that all it is is the mechanics of the, that's what's holding the car together. And that it is a one passenger car there are eight plus billion of us on planet Earth, but each one of us is driving our own individual car. And they're everywhere. They're in front of us and behind us and on the sides and, and everywhere. But we all belong here. We're here for a purpose. And so the front wheels, these are all connected. And the front wheels are, are doing and they lead. It's the thoughts we think and the actions we take. And the back wheels represent our feelings, our emotional feelings, as well as our physiological feelings, our physiology feelings, uh, as to whether or not uh, we're calm or upset, as to whether or not we, the blood pressure is going up or if it's being within bounds. And so this is our total behavior and they're all working together. The thing of it is, is as we go through life and behave, um, sometimes we begin to kind of turn around and use our car backwards in that we begin to go with feelings more than we do with thinking and acting. And the goal is to be led by the thoughts we think and the actions we take and to feel good about them rather than to regret the actions we took and the thoughts that we thought. So I love words and I love how they, their meaning and what they came to mean initially and how we use them and abuse them. But I find it very interesting that car and career kind of have the same root word. It uh, is Latin for carriage and that carriage was to not only carry the person, but to carry things and to carry people. And so then it, became looking at the car or the carriage and it became to career because it's the road or the course that one takes in life. And that has a lot to do with how well we function with our thinking and acting as well as with our feeling and our physiology. And then I find it also very interesting that travel and travail are kin to each other. That supposedly years ago, travel was much more difficult than it is today. Well, it certainly was longer than it is today. But whether you're going by vehicle or by plane or train, there's still a lot of travail that goes on in travel. So uh, 
I just wanted to share that with you. I thought that was really interesting how that the car and the carriage and the travel and the travail can, uh, it's like something that we experience from birth to death and it's part of our total behavior. So all we do is behave and we're always behaving whether we want to acknowledge that or not. And there's four components to our behavior. Thinking and the avenue through which it is expressed is it is coming through our mind and that we consider, we think about, we consider the issues of life. We weigh and balance them. Another component of behavior is our feelings. It's our emotions. It's how we feel about the issues of life, whether it's okay, whether it's stressing, whether, you know, it's the feelings, the emotional feelings. It's also the doing. It's the action part, not only the thinking and the feeling, but the, the action part, the doing. And I equate that with it's expressed through our will. Yes, I will do that. No, I will not do that. It is expressed through our will. And then another of the total behavior is our physiology, how things are working, whether the heart is beating within good circadian rhythm, as of whether or not the blood pressures, the body, the, the fluids, are they releasing and flowing? And it just has to do with our physiology. And that physiology is expressed through our body as a whole. And it answers, responds, or replies to the issues of life. You know, have you ever had anything, how the, the words we say are very accurate, sometimes much more accurate than we know. Have you ever uh, accused someone of being a pain in your neck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, they're just a pain in the neck. And, you know, we really can get a pain there. Or, we get, or have you ever said anything makes you sick? Well, our body, it's our physiology that is answering us, responding or replying to the issues of life and to how we handle them. And here's a little fill in the blank from Dr. Glasser. Dr. Glasser said we control the world for by blank. What do you think? Hmm. Well, Dr. Glasser said we control the world for need. Mm -hmm. whatever our need is and we're, we're very needy people and it's okay to be needy and it's okay to have our needs met we control the world for what we need by what by our behavior and our behavior consists of those four components the thoughts we think the actions we take the, the emotional feelings that we feel and the physiology the working out of it so Behavior is action taken in an attempt to get a need met. And we do have these needs. And uh, so here we're gonna look at the spectrum of behavior. Now the spectrum is how do we handle, there's four, there's a lot of things, but there's four basic things in particular that we kind of look at is how do we problem solve? Well, this is looking at the spectrum. On one end, we could be real quick. Well, we see something wrong, we just have the answer right away. What to do, what the, the, the resources to go to. And we kind of know what that bottom line is. Or on the other end, and not that one end is better than the other, it's just a spectrum of. It may be, in looking at the problem, to be real suspicious and to be real calculating. Another issue that we face in behavior is how do we, what is our spectrum of dealing with or handling people or communicating with or relating to people. Well, on one end of the spectrum is to be outgoing and spontaneous. I mean, just, just to having a welcoming that you're always welcome to, it's good to meet you, nice to know you. Or on the other spectrum, we could be a little reserved, a little cautious. Um, another spectrum to look at and how we behave with our thoughts, feelings, actions, and physiology is the pace that we take. Whether it's rigid and predictable and we want all that security or whether it's more flexible and unstructured. And then another is how we process information, how we process the problem, how we process people, how we process what's going on. You know, and sometimes some of us may be by the book you have to be really cautious, and, you know, one of, exactly. Whereas others of us is outside the box. It's just risk-taking. This is what I think. This is what I'm into right now. 
And so we look at all these spectrums. How do we handle problems? How do we deal with people? What is our pace in life? Is it energetic or non-energetic? And how do we process the things that cross our path in life? Well, there's a lot of other things that could be explored. There's just a few of them. As in our energy level, our moods, predictability. How do we make decisions? How sensitive we are to we? And that sensitivity, all of them have a very wide scope. As in sensitivity, not only meaning is how easily does someone become angry or how are they having their feelings hurt, but it also could be sensitivity to clothing or to materials or to the sun. There's just such a broad spectrum on, on each one. And all of that is part of our behavior, the intensity of our emotions. And so our behavior is, there's a lot of, it is chosen. And no matter what it is we do, we are choosing it. And that goes back to choice theory, which is the theory that everything we do is a choice. The thing of it is, is that we may not know it's a choice. We may not have come to the realization that we're making those choices. Behavior is purposeful. We're choosing that choice because we think it's going to help us. It's going to be good for us, or it's going to accomplish something that we want accomplished. Behavior is an attempt to get a need met. And again, it may be a need that we don't even know we need, that, that's there. But it's something that's giving us that that gnawing inside that there's there's an emptiness here that needs to be met and we behave in order to try to get that met behavior is predictable and it's classifiable um, all the books that are written all the histories it's looking at this happened the kind of the trails that it followed is predictable and there's all kinds of institutions that have these things to, to classify are you in this realm or you in that realm or you in another realm so uh, we have a tendency to read one another more than we read ourselves and sometimes we need to know more about us than we do about others behavior is a thermostat of our moods or one's mental or emotional state it's just you know if you've ever been anyone that you're around that you have to kind of walk tenderly because you don't want to upset the apple cart you don't want to upset their moods but our behavior is kind of that thermostat the way we part of that uh, spectrum that we were looking at our behavior says in actions what we cannot say in words you know to be well just the the acting out the the mood the the expression on the face the way the carry the body those actions say what we're not saying in words behavior is total it's total and they all work together in tandem behavior is based on experience as well as our temperament not only the the genes that were put together and the fluids and the food that we eat and all of those kind of things but the things that we have experienced it uh, makes up who we are the longer a behavior goes on, the more ingrained it becomes and the more difficult it is to change it. And who among us has not had something in our life that we want to change that has been somewhat of a difficulty to overcome? Behavior that needs predominantly needs one need may interfere with meeting other needs. And then behavior is either responsible or irresponsible. And it may be varying degrees of that responsibility or irresponsibility. Sometimes we can think we're being so responsible and we're really taking over grounds that is not within our purview. So in, we want to be in alignment. And going back to looking at our vehicle. So our vehicle gets us from point A to point B. And we want it to get us from point A to point B with, uh, well, suppose it's pulling to the right. I mean, you have to really hold on to that steering wheel to keep it from going to the left or the right. Well, that is an indication that there's something wrong with the steering mechanism. There's something that, that is out of alignment needs to be fixed. And often, you know, we have a rough ride because it, things just aren't 
as smooth as they could be. And the tires, as well as a lot of the internal things that keep the vehicle fluid and flowing, they begin to wear out prematurely. Whereas whenever we have things in alignment, it's not that fight or flight, but we face it and flow with it. That whenever there is something there that begins to pull to the left or the right, or, you know, that, that, that is askew, as we begin to really face it and deal with it before it becomes a major problem. And that it is a, it's not a win or lose proposition. It's an equalizing of power. That all of us together are smarter than any of us. And that as we can work together on looking at difficult circumstances, we can uh, come up with a big plethora of suggestions. And then saying no in one area is saying yes in another area. And rather than wearing ourselves out, as we can begin to realize, you know what, I may be a little bit, things may be a little bit more healthy in this area than they were in that area. And always looking at health, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, financially, relationally, uh, spiritually, every kind of health there can be to be working on and keeping all of them healthy and flowing. So Paul Meyer said, people are eager to improve their circumstances that are unwilling to improve themselves and thereby, therefore, they remain bound. And so as we can begin to look at the things in our life that are out of alignment and begin to equally look at to face and flow and to uh, allow a weakness to become a strength. So here's the difficulty with all of our behaviors and with life in general, that we have some needs that are universal, they're genetic, they are general, they're overlapping, and they're sometimes in conflict. That our internal needs, and they are internal, they're all internal, our internal needs are met externally. I mean, we have the need to survive. But you know what? We're not like a plant. We don't just sit here and absorb the whatever it is that comes from the sun that keeps the, you know, it, it doesn't happen that way. We have to go out here. We have to earn the money to buy it. We have to go to the grocery store to, or grow it. Or, you know, there's a multitude of ways that we do the external to bring it internally. Well, the same thing is true with, with relationships. I mean, you know, yes, we're born into a family and into a community, but we also need to interact with those that are outside of us so that we can be more of a family and a community and a, and a, and a society. A person pursues these internal motivators unconsciously. Have you ever wanted something? You were, and maybe you even use the term hunger, even though there wasn't an ounce of hunger there. But you wanted something and you were looking and looking and looking because there was something internally that wasn't fulfilled, that wasn't need satisfying. And you began to maybe open cabinets or look in the refrigerator because we have a tendency to go with what we are most familiar with uh, on any given basis. So we pursue these internal motivators unconsciously. And the pursuit of these internal motivators are often done in destructive ways. It's often listening to someone else's advice that was not so good for us. Or sometimes it's just trying things that uh, are untested or unproven. But we often pursue them in ways that seem like would be good. And again, back to Dr. Glasser, he says that our initial, that we're always doing the best we can with the information that we have. And so it's also not only, it's getting more information as well as learning more things about life and about us. John Maxwell says that people change only. That we've talked about sometimes it's hard to change. People change only when it hurts enough you have to, you learn enough you want to, and you receive enough you are able to. 
And that is my goal and everyone that I work with. Uh, because most, you know, we reach out to find something because there's something there that needs to be fixed. And to learn enough that you want to learn more and to receive enough that, hey, this makes sense. And it makes so much sense. I'm going to actually put it into practice. And that is another definition for choice theory. That it makes so much logical sense that I'll just put it into practice. So our actions. As we begin to look at what we are doing and looking for the future, that we cease to be determined by the past. We realize that I flubbed up, I made an error, but I'll correct it as much as I can, and I realize that I'm still a person of worth and value. And you allow your habits to no longer to define you or to predict your future. That yes, I have been this, and it has been a habit. And then you begin to take initiative to actually get out there and, and get to know who you are and to become who you are. And to begin to break those chains of causation, you know, of that thought of because this happened, this had to happen. Because this happened, this had to happen. Well, because this happens, we do not have to fall in on it. We do not have to cave in. We can begin to start a new life. And so we want to look at willpower and discipline. Well, willpower, you know, it goes back up there. We was looking a minute ago that that's part of the, that's part of the thing of the body is whether or not it's the decisions we make. I will do this. I will not do that. But if we just go with that willpower, how much willpower I have, we have an increasing, we can, it, it's an increasing effort to put forth that willpower. And sometimes we just become uh, really difficult in the process. Whereas we start that new life with discipline. It's a habit and it becomes little or no effort as you begin to see the rewards that are reaped. And so here's just kind of a little graphic of the keys to change. As we begin to change our habits of thoughts, thinking, action, and physiology by default. As we become aware, aware, aware of what we're thinking, aware of our emotions, aware of the tiredness, the destruction. And then we take personal responsibility for how I am handling, responding to, dealing with this person, this problem, this pace, this. And we continually self-evaluate, self-evaluate, self-evaluate. Was that effective? Was it ineffective? Did I hurt someone? Am I hurting me? Was I being honest? We continually self-evaluate. And as we begin to be aware and really listen to our body, our body will tell us what the problem is. We just need to listen and, and uh, say, oh, no, I didn't know that was wrong. And it's okay to not know, but it's not okay to keep not knowing. And then we make a plan. What plan do we need to make? And think it through. It's some help. But always, always, no matter what we do, is to get honest, honest, honest with yourself. Because the more honest we can become with us, the more true we can become with our actions, thoughts, feelings, and physiology. But things that's going to keep us from changing is as we just justify it. Well, I can help, but that's just the way I am. Or that we rationalize, kind of the yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And when I have someone that's giving me the yeah, but, I say, you know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing you say, I agree, but I'm not about to agree. So maybe it's time to stop the rationalization and look at it face on. Or we deny it. Or we are dishonest. Or we're just afraid. Well, sometimes we have to prove ourselves to be more bold and valiant than we have been. Mary Hunt says, do not allow your feelings to direct your life. That's the job of your values, your ethics, and your morals. That's the job of the outcomes. So here's just a little thing that, that I drew out, kind of showing the spectrum of our total behavior. So here we are right here in the middle. This is us. This is me. This is you. And it's your thinking, your actions, your feelings, and your physiology. 
And so here's the family, the mate, the children, the boss, the co-workers, the acquaintances, the community, society, it's the world as a whole. Because we touch all of those things and all of those things touch us. So how are we behaving? And so all we do in life is behave. So maybe the important thing is how you behave, not how you feel. It's how you behave, not how you feel. Discipline yourself to do the loving thing and relationships will develop, which is the foundation for problem solving, dealing with people. We cannot change another. We can only change ourselves. And that gives us something that we can really work with as we begin to work on ourselves because it's full of information. And uh, so thank you for being here. We're going to uh, close it for today. And good week, good day, and good mental health.